RPGs, like, and what, what, what do you like about it? So I would say the experience of pretending to be someone else. Um, it, it's just a lot of fun. You get to be adventurous and, and become someone that, you know, maybe you normally, if you're shy, then you can be someone outspoken or you can try a, a different personality on her for size, basically. I mean, it's it's fun to try different characters and, and different avenues. So I, that's what I really love about it. Christina, so about okay, you? Yeah. So I, well, a couple different things. So when I played Starport with the kids, like, we started it when we were homeschooling. Um, and we used it to incorporate math and mm -hmm. problem solving and, like, a lot of really good life skills for them to learn. So I really like that from the, like, parent to child aspect of, like, being able to, all right, well, let's practice this. Um, my older child has a lot of, like, sensory sensitive things. And so to be able to help her get through challenging situations and give her a place where she could practice that and then, like, take a minute to breathe or cry if she needs to and... And then still work through the problems, right? Has helped her a lot develop those skills out in the real world. Um, me personally, I like it because, like you said, <clears throat> getting to try on different personalities. But I see it as like not just different full personalities, but different aspects of my personality. Mm. So the first character I played was a changeling rogue who was super flirtatious and very, you know, kind of spontaneous and impulsive, and you know, so I, I probably have ADHD and a lot of neurodivergence. And so I got to have a character that was very impulsive and just kind of did things and <clears throat> almost died many times because of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, but I got, to, I got to just do that, right? Um, now I'm playing a character that's a wizard who's very quiet and shy and very bookish. Mm -hmm. um, very smart, mm -hmm. but like very not good with people and really socially awkward, which is also a part of my personality. So I have these complexities that I get to kind of explore and play with and, you know, do things that I also think I get a chance to explore different things. Like, you know, I have not yet been a male character, but you can be a male character and try on a different persona and have a chance to Lots of different things. <laughs> so I have been a male character once, and that was a lot of fun. And and I, I kind of played it as a jock, a very yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, I know fits slinging my dick around, <laughs> like very flirtatious guy and like ladies man. I, mean, I feel like it would be very fun. weird for me to play a male character and to, like. Because there, like, there's privilege that comes with being male, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, to have that privilege, I don't know that I would be able to play that, right? Like, it would, it would have to be very outside of myself to walk into a room and be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do this." Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's that's what I what I'm sitting here realizing is because you know I I play with all three of you in, in various campaigns, mm -hmm. and um, you've never seen me play a male character, and know. they've only seen me play a male character. <laughs> yeah. I'm in two with Lish, and I'm in one with Sarah, mm -hmm. where I'm playing a male character. So I've heard you talk about your male characters. Yeah. But I've never actually played uh, with you being a male character. And, and, you know, following up, you know, with, with uh, about that, being able, for me, <clears throat> to, um, to be those various areas of my personality. Mm -hmm. I have one of my favorite characters... I just imagine it would be what I would be if I was in that world, like what I would want to be. That's cool. Right. All, all of you, you know, I, I, I tend to be a very tactful individual, right? Mm -hmm. And so I tend to censor myself. But you don't know what goes on in my head. My character, Solaris, is, she's a ranger. She has no filter. Like I play her how I would want to play her and like that would be me. And so I find that freeing, and um, 
Also, I, I've been, um, being a DM, I have some newer players as well who have never played anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I told her, I, I told one of my players, you will be surprised about what you learn about yourself by playing your character. Mm -hmm. That's because, very true. Right. Because you, because, because there's things that your character is going to go through that you will never have to go through in your entire life. Right. Mm -hmm. But it kind of teaches. Well, what would I do? What, what do I think about that? What about what about you? What do you like? Well, I right now I've only been playing female characters because learning the game and understanding the game and having to learn a completely different sex was probably going to be a little bit challenging because I'm still having to learn. You know. <laughs> The characters mm -hmm. ins and outs and what they want to do but I like the free aspect like you were saying because I can be a little bit more outgoing and stuff because in your normal day-to-day -day life you have to kind of be a little bit more reserved and out in our jobs and whatever and right. so it's one of those things that in the game you don't have to be as tactful you can be a little bit more outgoing you can be you know pretty much anything you want to be and that, and that actually Kind of drew me to it when my husband was talking about it and going through all that stuff it was like oh maybe i do want to do that you know maybe i want to play <laughs> crazy characters and my next one that i'm kind of creating they're like a pirate but they're gonna be a land pirate and so i kind of like that whole aspect of you know just kind of getting out of my comfort zone yeah so yeah. it's yeah. a lot of fun but i haven't done the other sex yet <laughs> working on uh, that I, so. and i i think that uh, <laughs> maybe it's, it is possible that one reason why i'm very comfortable Mm -hmm. playing either gender is I'm actually the youngest of five kids and I'm the only girl. Mm -hmm. um, I am also not the most feminine. Uh, I'm feminine. I'm not the most girly of women. And so a lot of my interests growing up were, you know, wrestling and, you know, I was in theater and, and you know, performing arts, but also lots of football, playing mm -hmm. volleyball. I played softball. I did a lot of sports as well. So I just, I'm like, it's just me, but I just have to be a different gender, right? <laughs> so I did play a gender binary, mm -hmm. uh, non-binary character um, I did in the one-off. Uh, we played a one-off and I was uh, an artificer. Oh. And uh, I was non-binary. Mm -hmm. And so being able to like, because and one of the reasons I did that was because one of the things I wanted to do was to practice using gender neutral pronouns. Okay. And so I created a character who was non binary so that I could practice using those pronouns in a safe place where I wasn't going to offend anybody and I could, you know, screw it up and it was okay. Yeah. But it's got, it helped me be much better in real life at using those pronouns. I think it's also fun to be able to play with like sexuality and gender and things Absolutely. like that and to be able to try different things. Because I also played a barbarian uh, fighter who uh, <laughs> was a lesbian and had a baby the whole time. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I that, really that one for a one-off. That, that was when I did the Goliath Druid, who <clears throat> was a pacifist. That's great. Well, yeah. We had a lot of fun with that one. But I got to, you know, because it, especially, um, so I came out as bisexual a couple years ago, and so being already married and having a family it's kind of hard to kind of see how that works in your life. Right. And so being able to play with those things in a setting where yeah. you can be free to explore those things and have fun with it mm -hmm. and, you know, and there's no judgment. Right. Absolutely. You know? like, so, so, um, Lish, I want you to tell me what you find the most difficult about playing RPGs. What, what is it that challenges you? It's really remembering like as you're building your character you start getting these different levels and things like that and 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 then you go and you play this one game once a month and you're like wait a minute what did I do and how many things can I do and and so it's it's really trying to remember all of those bits and pieces and I know like over time as you start to do this more you remember the rules you remember different aspects of it that you have to keep in your mind especially you know you have an action, an attack, and a bonus action. So mm -hmm. that was challenging because I was like, oh, I just want to keep hitting this person, you know? And you're like, no, no, I only get to do it. It's six <laughs> seconds. <laughs> it's only six seconds. <laughs> but it's like, no, he's hitting me. I want to go. But, yeah, so mm -hmm. that's Absolutely. been challenging is, is 
knowing the rules and 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 what can I do in those t- in that and time frame? Even even being a long term player, uh, I hardly ever learn the rules. I'm not the person that reads the rule book, even as a DM. I'm not the person that goes and reads the rule book. Mm-hmm. I don't need to know that much information. What I need to know is the basics, like here's what an action does and bonus action. I need to know that part. I need to know how spells work. Um, but I don't need to know how a wizard spell works when I'm playing a cleric. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't I don't retain that. Right. So that's one thing that I that I struggle with is it's a, it's a similar thing to that, but it's remembering all of the things that your character could do. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, though, is I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes it's other players that can be challenging. <laughs> yes, in, <laughs> our, in one of our last games. So because being new, I'm like watching the board and and watching what everybody's doing, and I'm like, okay, I can do this, I can do that, mm-hmm. I can do this, and then this one over here decides. Oh, they're gonna just completely just blow up the board, and then I look up. I'm like, what just happened? You know, and I was like, wait that, a minute. That's so that, 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 that happened in one of <laughs> one of um, my games, uh, one of my once a month games that I play, is I'm a, a paladin, and I I in in D and D you you move thirty feet unless you have extra move, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm a frontline fighter. I you know I we've been playing for a while, so it's not like we were all new. Right. But one of the other characters beat me on initiative, and we had this fortress that has ballistas hooked up top. Okay? Mm-hmm. And you just pull up the fortress, it's a magic fortress, and it comes up, and you have all these siege weapons on top. Well, they threw it in the worst possible spot for a melee fighter to get to the enemy. Mm-hmm. And I went right after them. And I sat there and I went, I don't have any idea what to do because because you because I'm blocked I can't do I can't fly I can't so it, it was it's like those moments and you're like okay now I have to switch I have to figure out what else to do mm-hmm. so sometimes it can be can be other players but it's if that's still brings you'll, growth and conflict yes you'll spend your whole time like while everybody else is going like okay I'm gonna do this and then I can do that next and so you're uh-huh. planning out all those things you need to do and then all of a sudden they go and you're like <laughs> like, okay, I guess I'm going to do this now. Oh, yeah, they switched up. Uh, and one of my characters, I'm a long-range fighter and really good at it. And all of a sudden, I had to do melee. And I was like, wow. wow. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to scratch them. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> so, Sarah, what's, what do you find most difficult about RPGs? Um, like you were saying, the the other players, um, I, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to name any names. But I, 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 I know it's me. It's fine. <laughs> I'm the problem, it's me. Um, no. um, well, I am the DM, so. <laughs> no, I find it most difficult when people don't show up. Like, yes. like I have, you know, in, in our group, we have someone's a talker, someone's a fighter, someone, you know, everybody plays their own part. They have their own strengths and weaknesses. And when, when that one person doesn't show up and they're like, they're supposed to be the person that's best at talking, and you're like, well... What am I supposed to do? Like I have a minus one in in uh, in talking to someone, so it's like ooh. Um, but you know, we we work through it, and and the the way that we problem solve how to get past that has been interesting. Um, and another thing that I find difficult um, is 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 knowing like what's okay to do. Like, can I? I don't know. Jump five feet. Well. Maybe let's see what what my um you know acrobatics is mm-hmm. you know what what am I supposed to roll roll at this point so mm-hmm. I find that a little difficult a little challenging but that just comes with time as you get more comfortable with your character and get more comfortable with the game then you figure it out along the way mm-hmm. yeah, and then you roll and then you fall flat on your face <laughs> right get a one <laughs> building building character yep <laughs> or or the the game we played um. I can't remember. We were fighting an, an, an enemy. Sorry, um, and and 
thus far in the game, we were able to persuade our way. There was no fighting. There had been no issues. We were just able to talk our way out of things. Yes, I remember. We had the kumbaya. <laughs> yes. It was easy. You know, no big deal. <laughs> and then I think you were like, no, I'm going to fight this guy. And I I'm know. Like, and well, wait a second. <laughs> of <laughs> ruins like I'm, I'm you know and I love animals and I'm very this is short yes yeah, yeah, I'm very short sure. <laughs> but so just as happy <laughs> <laughs> yes but beautiful beautiful but yeah it, it it's been so my character and and again a complete opposite of my actual personality because mm -hmm. normally I would be like heck yeah let's beat this guy up um, <laughs> but being the character, that per that particular character is like, oh no, let's kumbaya and talk our way through it. Yeah. So My character's not always that aggressive, <laughs> but yeah. that particular enemy um, did a lot of bad things, he and did. I just very wasn't much going did. to let him get by. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I tell you. Well, Christina, what do you find the most difficult? So for me, the hardest part is getting that initial idea for a character. Mm. Like, I will sit there and be like, I don't know, i got to create a character for this game. I don't know what I'm going to play. I'll look at all the different things. And I have no idea. And I'll play around with a million things. But once I get, like, again, when I was creating the barbarian with the baby, once I had that idea, mm -hmm. oh, my God, baby. I wish that, like, because my thought was I, I want to be a mom mm -hmm. in the game. That's cool, like, and I want to know what that would be like. And so I, and then as soon as I had that idea, I was like, oh, okay. And all, everything else kind of put itself together. I wanted her to rage when the baby was in danger, right? Like, mm -hmm. I wanted her to be very protective of the baby. Like, that was her main goal, is I'm going to protect this baby, but she's trying to find her wife. Like, you know? And so once I had all of that put together, I had a character. Mm -hmm. But getting that initial idea for me is like, I, I just sit there paralyzed. Like, all right. Oh, yeah. uh -oh. For me, it's basing it off of a character I already know. Like like I said, the mm. one I currently am is like Hagrid. basically Hagrid. <laughs> so I do that. I, I I look at, you know, what do I want to be this time? A barbarian, a druid, whatever. And then what are they most similar like? Well, a druid, you know, I saw that they could be an animal lover. And I'm like, it's perfect. You know, Hagrid's loves animals. He takes care of them. He's in the forest all the time. So I'm going to base everything I know as Hagrid. And then I think her name is Bellatrix, <laughs> because yes. I'm just in love with Harry Potter, so. <laughs> um, but, like, I, I think I did that for my barbarian, too. I was like, okay, yeah. who's a strong person I know? And I based it off of, like, that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, see, so, yeah, see for me, um, I, again, I have been playing for a while, but I have a tendency to love um, background generation tables, such mm -hmm. as who were my parents? How many brothers and sisters did I have? What's my hair color? What's my oh, eye color? Okay. Because I think of the things that I didn't choose for myself, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I randomly generate a lot of those aspects because that is going to tell me who they are, mm -hmm. right? To a certain extent. And then I go, okay, so like, for instance, I'm going to talk about Celosia, my bard. Um, I rolled a lot of the background, like, was her both parents alive? You know, I rolled where her father had been killed, mm -hmm. um, what they did for a living, like, how many siblings she had. And it really kind of informed me, okay, she was, like, 16 when her father was killed, right? So... So she'd grown up with a happy family to a certain extent, and then tragic. And so that is how I kind of developed her personality, was why she's closed off. Mm -hmm. She's, but she wants to be open. She wants to find people to open up to. But when tragedy affects someone, sure. you kind mm -hmm. of put up walls. And mm -hmm. that's, that's where she, she came from you know, as okay. a personality. And that's what I tend to do, because I, I'm, I like to say I'm creative, but I'm not very, um, I'm not like good at making up new things. Yeah. So. Well, and especially with how long you've been playing. 
Like, I was wondering how you could continue to create new and different characters after you've been playing for a decade. You know, like, that's, that's a long time. <laughs> a long time, but there's so many different races, so many different backgrounds, so many different classes. I still have yet to play a wizard. Huh. Because it's not my natural class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there are some classes I'm really good at and other classes that I'm like, so Barbarian was one of those that I never played. I never wanted to play. Paladin was the same thing. I never wanted to play a Paladin because of the alignment in, yeah. in prior to 5e. But for um, two different games, I created a Barbarian, but he's not a traditional Barbarian. He, gets, he goes in and he gets upset. You know, like if he gets hit, then he rages. He doesn't like immediately go rage. Um, yeah. it's, it's more of a fighting style mm -hmm. than an actual... Life's personality. Yeah. And the paladin that I have is the same way. Is mm -hmm. but because I don't have that lawful good written requirement that you used mm -hmm. to, that's what I couldn't play. I don't play lawful very well. <laughs> yeah. It gives me a headache. <laughs> but but so I so so I tried paladin and so that's what these two games are coming from. Yeah. I really love the progression, right? The character progression. Mm -hmm. And so I like to start out with like a basic idea and that's all I know about them. Mm -hmm. And then as we go through and play, like it, and the wizard I'm playing right now is fairly young. She's in college. Mm -hmm. So she's a junior in college. So I'm like, great. So she knows enough next to nothing about herself. Like, because <laughs> that's what you know when you're in college. You're and, experimenting. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of her stuff is like, I have her basic like personality mm -hmm. and how she'll instinctively respond to things. But a lot of it I don't know. Like, and I'm just figuring it out as we go through things. And then from, from level to level, I make my character choices based on what has happened in previous sessions. Me too. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Absolutely. Hmm. So let's, let's split it. What do you find easy about playing RPGs? Like, what, what is the easiest part about it? The easiest part... Um... Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> challenging figuring out like how to roll and, and which dice is which and um, I, I I always have fun like it always is fun and a great time and, and yeah I may struggle sometimes but I, I always tend to have fun with it um, and, and I do that because it sounds weird or not weird but it sounds counterintuitive but like I was saying earlier the other people mm -hmm. sometimes are an issue, but sometimes that's the easy part, you know, bouncing off another person. Um, my character and your character are in kind of a interesting relationship. Well, yeah. they won't they, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> um, yeah. so I find that fun um, because I, the feelings I get um, for my character, I get to like feel like a teenager all over again, mm -hmm. and like yep. she's nervous, and it's it's that that part I find easy and and fun. I, I find that um, to be, I guess, the easy part of it is that you know you get to spend time with your friends and and. Mm -hmm. Go on a new adventure. I mean, I feel like Gandalf just grabbed me and said, "Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. Like, <laughs> what about you, Lish? What, what's easy for you? Honestly, it's that you know, getting. I work from home, so I'm always home, and you don't always have that camaraderie that you have in an office type setting. So, mm -hmm. being able to get out of the house and seeing people and going through adventures, it's just that's the easy part. Is just being yeah. able to have that human connection and, right. and just have a good time, you know, and it's the no judgment zone, right? right. So you, you really can do anything you want and not be judged by the people that are around you, which I, I think is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they can get annoyed with you and <laughs> oh, yeah. their characters might get annoyed and they'll just be like, yep, yeah, that's our relationship now. <laughs> that's my character. It's not really me. Now you're annoyed with me. <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> And then you move on and you come back the next time and you play. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I have heard that, like, uh, my husband will come home and tell me about his session and be like, oh, yeah, like, my character and then this other guy is, we hate each other. 
Like, we literally hate each other in game. Now, we're, we're best of friends in real life, but, like, we hate each other in game. And so I'm always, like, yelling at him or whatever. So I find that interesting, too. <laughs> well, you know, one game that I have, I always like to poke uh, one of the characters and just poke fun or like we'll be sitting back and I'll just have a snide comment or something like that <laughs> and they'll look over at me and in, in that same game when I play I play the male barbarian barbarian he's a multiclass he's a barbarian now wow uh, but from the very get go myself and and your husband um, his character it's like male posturing like the, uh, whole, the whole time. time. And it's and it's it's great because I sit there and I'm smug. My character is smug about it. Mm-hmm. Like I, my character doesn't actually feel threatened because he's that sure. You know, he's that full of himself, which is great. I like doing that because I'm not very full of myself. Um, but but that's what it is. It's like I get to we we sit there and we banter and. And you just you just feel that. Oh yeah. What about you? Yeah. What about you, Christina? What's easy for you? So when I was in theater, I was very good at getting into character. So to me, once I have that character idea and I and that person, I find the like following their instincts, like what they would do, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. easy. Like I don't have to sit there and think like, oh, how would how would Tooks respond to this or how would Laura respond to this? Like it's it's very much like, nope, this is where they're at and this is what they would do. Like it's mm-hmm. very quick for me. Um, and I enjoy that part. I also like the the character relationships. Like we're talking about how we can hate each other, but also like uh, when I was playing Tooks, we had um, the, the, the person who sat right next to me was playing this big old shifter who was big and hairy and just... And we developed a like yeah a fighter, and we developed this brother sister relationship that I enjoyed so much. Mm -hmm. Like we were best of friends. You know, she'd get drunk one night and crawl into his window to like sleep it off. Like (laughs) it was fun, and you know, and Salosia and Tooks would like confide in one another at times, and their relationship. We were the we were the girls. We were the only two girls in the group. (laughs) Uh, So it wasn't as easy as the other relationship, but it was it was. A little bit more tender, right? Like, I like those intricacies of relationships you can have. Even, like, I said it's a great way to explore sexuality and things like that. But even outside of that, like, just those interpersonal relationships. Yeah, I, that's, 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 I, I, I agree with you on that. I, I let the um, experience and, you know, I, you know, what I've done shape my characters. And, and I don't have to think about how they would react for the most part. Um, the, the, so I find the characterization, the embodiment of my characters. Now this is not because I think this, but I think because of how the p- other players that I play with, they can tell when I'm playing my character. Like, mm-hmm. like it's very easy to tell. Not because of necessary accents or voice, but just, it's different. So a, a good example is in our once a month, games we have two different groups we're in the same world we're on two different sides of the same problem they're two different groups i happen to be the common player i'm playing two different characters in those games so what's happened is we came together for two games to do a big group and i'm playing two characters (laughs) um i so much enjoyed that game that was a good game For two reasons. One, I got to play both my characters, and and you could tell who was talking. Mm-hmm. It's very easy yeah. to tell who was talking. Um, but there were things that happened during that game between the two groups that then carry on into our other game. Mm-hmm. Talking about hating each other. Like, there's one character in our group that absolutely hates the wizard in the other group. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's to the point that they will snipe in like we have a way to communicate <laughs> there would be snide comments i find it hilarious because i'm in both groups right and but and then and then we have the opposite we have another character in our game who hates my character that happens to be in the other group but she's dating my character in that group <laughs> so it's great for me because i'm like role playing this and then i hear the snide remarks nice. <laughs> and i'm like okay Remember what game you're in. Remember what game you're in. I could see why you went for a character with multiple personalities. I, <laughs> I, I love it. And, and it's also with the, as the DM. 
you know, being the DM, I hope that when I bring out an uh, NPC that you guys interact with, that it's it's different and interesting, mm -hmm. and it's not the you know character that I play as the P I have a DM PC in that in both of my mm -hmm. games, and uh, because I find it, I fill in holes essentially. I fill mm -hmm. in a hole that the party has, but it also allows me as the DM to kind of go, oh hey, my character noticed this right. over here. Yeah. It's very helpful, but the accent, I gotta say, is the best. <laughs> I mean, you do this amazing Irish accent that I just <laughs> love every time you do it. Do <laughs> you have an Irish accent? Oh, it's fantastic. It's actually a Scottish accent. Oh, Scottish. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh my it's, God. it's, it's been We're a week in the knees here. <laughs> And, and I'm 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 the only male character right. in that group. The entire group. I'm oh. also the short one. I'm, I'm the rogue, and I'm the halfling, so I'm the smallest as well. Yeah. So I find it great to 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 play the male. I'm I'm a bring yeah. out Fenris. I uh, talk like this when I'm you know oh, role playing the character, and you can you can hear the difference. Um, which is great, but I have to make sure I don't have another character in that game that sounds <laughs> anything like this. <laughs> yes, that would be a hard accent to get in and into and out of. I feel like if I, you have multiple characters. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I did okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, it looks like it's time for our next course. Thank you for watching this episode of RPG Tea Time. What's your answers to today's questions? Let us know in the comments. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit the bell to be notified of new videos. Happy home brewing!